Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to carve some details and uh, scales in particular, which seems to be a very popular question I get asked on uh, various social media. So what I usually do is I start off by uh, cutting out these templates out of paper and I'm going to be using those as uh, some sort of a guideline to then transfer the uh, the lines that I'm going to be carving then later on to the actual wooden lure itself. I'm sure there is a better way to do this, but uh, this seems to be the best way I've been able to figure out how to do this accurately. So what I just do is I just place the uh, template onto the lure and use the use it as a, as a guide to uh, then draw out the uh, outlines that I'm going to be carving. Pretty st straightforward stuff. And I'm pretty sure somebody's going to ask me again what kind of wood I use, because I get that question a lot. So, for those who are wondering, I use maple. Pretty much always use maple on my doors. And uh, you know, sometimes you have to do these uh, finer, finicky details, and I just do that by hand usually. There's no reason to do uh, templates to those. So, um, when I usually start the carving, I start it off from the head and uh, then work my way back from there. And you gotta make sure that your knife is very sharp when you do this. And you really want to actually make take take some time to actually do this and don't rush. If you rush, you might screw them, things up royally, and you definitely don't want that to happen. Alright, now that I've actually uh, cut along every single line here, I'm gonna start to bring out the details in 3D form. And uh, uh, I must apologize here for the blurry image, but uh, apparently I had my camera focused on the wrong spot. But I'm sure you can get the general idea what I do here, even though the image is a little blurry. And uh, in case someone is wondering what kind of knife I use, this is a Tejima LC360, to be exact. And I've been using this knife for a really long time now, and uh, it's a great knife, I, I really like it. Uh, the fact that I can just uh, swap the blades is a really good asset, you can always get a really nice and sharp blade by just uh, replacing it, and, and the blades are really cheap as well. And uh, like before, you definitely do want to take take your time with this and don't rush too much. After I've carved everything, I'm going to uh, sand off all of the uh, carving marks that I made. And I usually always start off by using uh, grit 80 and go up to uh, 240 just to make sure that the uh, surfaces are nice nice and smooth once everything is nice and smooth I move on to the scales and I'm using this uh, template made out of plastic uh, I think this came out from uh, 
plastic box of uh, grapes that I had lying around and just decided to use that as the, as the template material. It's nice and flexible so it works out really well. Once all of the scales are drawn, I'm gonna start and cutting them with my uh, hobby knife. And you definitely want to try to be very accurate when you do this and uh, don't rush things. And also it's a good idea to, you know, maybe take a break once in a while when you do this. Late start like I do this at one go. I mean, I definitely have to take, take a break once in a while because your wrist gets so tired when you do this. But, you know, the end result looks rather awesome, so I think it's uh, pretty much worth it. So now that I've done all of the circle cuts, I've moved on into actually carving the scales themselves. And this is pretty much uh, exactly the same that I did before with uh, other details. And uh, yeah, this definitely does take a very long time to do, but uh, I think it's worth it in the end. Because it definitely does look very cool. But um, yeah, I guess this is pretty much all for me now. and. Uh, uh, apparently I've hit 9,000 subscribers today, so thanks a lot for that. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time, whenever that might be. So until then, keep on carving and um, keep on checking out my videos.